There are 10 points that undermine the claims a recent article in the magazine Foreign Policy has made against the foreign relations of the United Arab Emirates, written by John Hoffman, titled Washington's blank check for the United Arab Emirates must end. What is even more wrong is the advocacy by the author who is a doctoral candidate at George Mason University that the United States is doing itself a big disservice by not checking its relations with the UAE government, which could be very detrimental to to America's national interests. In the first instance, the author contradicted himself. He described the relationship between the United States and the United Arab Emirates as a blank check. This means that anything the Emirates will ask America for will be given to her by the US freely and without any conditions. But he acknowledged that the UAE has paid in cash $23 billion to purchase American-made weapon systems, including the advanced F-35 fighters, in a very lucrative arms deal for the US defense industry. Then, the writer accused the United Arab Emirates of fueling the civil war in Yemen. No single individual can escape the conclusion that it is Iran and its ally, the Houthi militia, who are shelling civilian and economic locations inside the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and are denying the delivery of food and humanitarian assistance to the starving population of the Yemeni people in any area they control in that country. He did not mention the great help the Emirates has been given to the people in Yemen to alleviate their suffering in a civil war instigated by Iran and its Yemeni collaborators. Third, the article makes a very strange claim that it is the United Arab Emirates policy in the Gulf that it is the cause of instability in the Gulf region. Since the advent of the Islamic Revolution in Iran in 1979, and Tehran does not spare any effort to instigate troubles in the Gulf. The economic costs for Iran's dangerous behavior in the Gulf and elsewhere have been huge. Iran will never stop its policy of violence and terrorism in the Gulf unless there is a strong deterrence of her. Therefore, the coordination of defense policy between the United States and the United Arab Emirates and other Gulf states is so essential to thwart any attempt by Iran to spread term oil in the Gulf. The fourth point which the author pushes for is that the United States policy collaborating with the United Arab Emirates is designed as one of offshoring, which means that America delegate to the UAE certain tasks that Abu Dhabi will be willing to assume on behalf of the United States. Again, nothing could be more wrong than this explanation. While the American presence in the Gulf region is still strong and visible, such existence solicits help from countries like the Emirates to maximize the level of strategic cooperation among nations who strive for the stability and the prevalence of order to promote the welfare of an area like the Gulf. Fifth, the article missed much on the troubled situation in Syria. Again, it repeats the same illogic found in the liberal and the left-wing media outlets in America and the West that the Emirates is prepping up the regime of Bashar al-Assad. The writer forgot that the Emirates had called for a peaceful solution to the conflict in Syria. It had demanded the return of refugees. It insisted on a peaceful solution to the Syrian strife. In addition, the UAE has offered sanctuary to tens of thousands of Syrian refugees and have accorded them decent treatment, unlike other countries that have abused the Syrian refugees who were forced to settle in their territories. Furthermore, the Emirates works closely with Russia in Syria to curb Iran's bad influence there. Ironically, the article charges that the Emirates is renewing the legitimacy of the Bashar al-Assad regime. In fact, the Biden administration is staying away from the Syrian opposition in an attempt to discover opportunities to resurrect its ties with the current Syria government. Sixth, the article ignores another strategic reality, which is the Turkish intervention in Libya. The Emirates' action in that Arab North African country has been aiming at ending the division of Libya. The support the Emirates has bestowed on Field Marshal Khalifa Haftar and the forces loyal to him are in response to the extremists and the mercenaries which Turkey has brought to Libya who are paid to ruin that nation. The Emirates also cooperates with Egypt to help Libya recover from the civil war that had engulfed that country following the overthrow of Gaddafi. 
Seventh, the article in Foreign Policy speaks no truth and basically spreads lies in reference to the change that occurred in Egypt in the year 2013 when the armed force intervened to topple the Muslim Brother rule. The writer seems to be remiss on the fact that the army in Egypt was mounting a huge popular protest of millions of Egyptians who rose up to challenge the theocracy the Muslim Brothers were establishing in Egypt. Throngs of hundreds of thousands of Egyptians filled the streets asking the army in Egypt to intervene. Expectedly, the United Arab Emirates took the wise steps of endorsing such a popular demand by millions of Egyptians. It was also a major contributor to the effort to help the Egyptian economy that was suffering severely as a result of the turmoil that swept over a nation of 100 million people in the aftermath of the Arab Spring. Eighth, the article misuses the question of human rights. It states the same typical accusation that a certain country violates human rights policies and accordingly the United States must not tolerate such a policy perpetrated by a country which is an ally of the U.S. There has to be a correction to this narrative. The silly thing about blaming a country for human rights misconduct is that the United States government could be also faulted on the very same grounds. For instance, the American military withdrawal from Afghanistan represents a huge omission in the human rights policies of the United States government since Taliban has not committed itself to protect the rights of women in that country. It would have been better for the author to pay attention to how the Biden administration have failed to uphold human rights both as principles and policies in regard to many countries and in numerous cases. Ninth, the author exaggerated the incident concerning the investigation of a number of lobbying activities in Washington, D.C. on behalf of the United Emirates government. The Emirates has announced its willingness to cooperate with any investigation of that case. Importantly, the Emirates does not buy influence inside American politics. When it approaches the corridors of politics in America, it does this through the legitimate channels and in respect to the lawful methods of doing business in Washington. Tenth and finally, the article is totally ignorant on the question as why the UAE is an important country. This was the author confessed, but again, he is not realizing the great success story the United Arab Emirates stands for. It's a country that embodies modernization, development, tolerance, and moderation. A nation these great qualities has commanded the respect of the whole world. This type of article is directed par excellence, so that the writer did not develop the idea of the article on his own. It was noticed that many of Qatar's influencers exaggerated and promoted the article upon its publication in foreign policy. For your information, the article came at a time when Washington has so far refused to provide Qatar with drones and also in conjunction with U.S. coordination with the UAE on solutions and mediations in Sudan. It is important to emphasize that what unites the United States in the Emirates is great interest, the most important of which is the fight against terrorism, and this is according to the testimony of senior officials of the White House, the Pentagon, and the State Department. Hey, Maria Malouf here. Please click to like and subscribe to Maria Malouf TV YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.